this was only the beginning of what turned out to be one of the most competitive six-game series in NBA Finals history. Jordan, yes. Horrible over. Turn around in the face of Brian Williams. Jordan, again. Hornacek, yes. Jeff Hornacek. That's a three for Michael Jordan. He has nine. Nine of the 17. Stockton with the step. And that is their first field goal. After dropping the first two in Chicago, the Jazz needed a cure for the first time finals blues. Now, while most of the Bulls worried about the noise, Dennis Rodman was concerning himself with religion. Some of them. That's fair. Maybe I don't know some of the Mormon people. Mormon people here don't like me either, right? Oh, that's a given. That's a given, right? So what the hell? If I knew it was a, like a religious type deal, uh, I wouldn't never say this, you know. I'm, I'm sorry about that, you know. And while the words of Rodman emptied his pocketbook, the book of John tied the series at two. John Stockton has an enormous shot. Here comes John, and he's got nothing but ball. And then the foot race is on. Four of the NBA Finals with the Bulls up two games to one. And Jordan has it. Fires down on the line. The celebrating could be heard across the state. And the world finally got a glimpse of what jazz fans have been waiting for for years. 71 degree day here in Salt Lake City. Snow-capped mountains in the background. Festive scene around the Delta Center. NBA. The entire trouble starts and ends in Salt Lake City. You got it! I came here thinking Chicago, but it's like they're breaking me down with their will. Salt Lake is breaking me down, and I sense the will. I sense the just the excitement for it. I got to go on record. I think Utah can win this one, and if they win this one, I think they can take one out of two back there. But the jungle karma couldn't stop an ailing Michael Jordan in Game 5. A heroic performance by Michael Jordan. So the party plans in Chicago had already begun, even before Game 6 had started. I mean, I don't want to get overconfident and start thinking about things before the game is over. And up until the final five seconds of Game 6, the Bulls' celebration plan was in jeopardy. Five on the 24. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. From 17 feet away, the Jazz's most memorable season came to an end. To you guys, we love y'all very much. We almost showed you the title. We're going to give it another shot. Thank you. Well, they may not have shown us the title, but they showed a lot of heart and a lot of talent. And they showed the Bulls that they were in a battle all the way. They sure did, Alema. Well, the Jazz fans were also a big part of this season to remember and coming up next we'll show you how they won the unofficial title of world's best primetime tribute to the Utah Jazz, a season to remember. I'm Gretchen Carr. Well, some of the electricity and the sizzle of this season, of course, we can pay tribute to the fans for. The team belongs to this entire state, and almost the entire state was rooting the Jazz on every step of the way. New specialist Karen Shaler takes a look back at the fan frenzy like no other. Outrageous. They are here, and they're having a great time, no doubt about it. Out of hand and sometimes out of control. Somewhere the excitement for the Utah Jazz was completely contagious, spreading like wildfire and throughout Robert Utah. Said, and when the Jazz made history, winning their first ever Western Conference Finals, it was like adding lighter fluid to an already raging flame.
The excitement only intensified as the Jazz moved into the NBA Finals. At times, the fan frenzy out here was so outrageous, it was impossible to contain or control. And they're still celebrating out here. Back to Rod in the studio. Again, a very excited people out here. Back to you, Nick. Go way up. I can't win. <laughs> Inside the Delta Center during playoff games, the crowd noise was so overpowering, it practically peaked the decibel meter. Outside, fan support was equally strong. Huge jazz banners were plastered all over Utah. Jazz messages were found at the golf course, the top of tall buildings, and even elementary schools. And these patient and pumped up jazz fans waited hours in line demanding, show us the jazz t-shirts and hats. Go jazz. I'm hoarse from screaming last night. When the Jazz won game four of the finals, Jazz fever boiled over, pouring out into the streets in front of the Delta Center. It was like nothing Utah had ever seen before. As the excitement intensified, so did the demand for Jazz tickets. Scalpers were everywhere. People were charging and paying big bucks and trying anything and everything to score tickets. Have you been able to find one? No. Not even with that outfit? No. <laughs> the fan frenzy came to a screeching halt after the Jazz, playing at home, lost game five of the finals. As thousands of disappointed and shocked Jazz fans shuffled out of the Delta Center, there was almost an eerie silence. Then, a stunned Utah crowd had to accept it was over. When the Jazz lost game six in Chicago, the Bulls had won the NBA Finals. But Jazz fans quickly regrouped, turning out at the airport by the thousands for a hero's welcome home for the Jazz. As Jazz players arrived back in Salt Lake City, the message was heard loud and clear. Utah fans are completely behind their Jazz, and they're convinced it's just a matter of time before the Jazz will bring home the title. And that fan frenzy was un unbelievable. Close to 10,000 fans flooded the airport last Saturday for the Jazz homecoming. Alema? You know, that's right, Gretchen. Uh, throughout the years, Jazz homecomings at the airport had been big events, but this year, they were the biggest, and players credit much of their success to the enthusiasm of their fans. News specialist Angela Ann shows us how thousands, and I mean thousands, of fans cheered this team on. It was this historic shot that we'll all remember. John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals. A trip to the NBA Finals would be a first for the Jazz and more than 15,000 fans waited at the airport to show them just what they thought about that trip. Never before had the players seen this kind of welcome, and many were overwhelmed. And the fans have been awesome. Three o'clock in the morning, just meeting people here is just unbelievable. Yeah. Should I open the hood up, have him stand up and stick his head out the room? Do you think you could get him? You think you could get him to do that? Come on, John. Stand up there. Stick your head out. But it was back to business in Chicago. Even after the team suffered two tough losses against the Bulls, 100 diehard Jazz fans welcomed the players home. The drive for the title ended with a close loss in Game 6. But that didn't stop the 10,000 fans from giving the Utah Jazz one last hero's welcome. The Jazz received a rare water salute reserved for special occasions. This was definitely one of them. I truly believe that not only are our fans the best in the NBA, but the best in professional sports. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. I just like to say thank you for all the support that you fans have given us. I don't think we've ever seen a building as loud and noisy as the Delta Center's been. The fans, to you guys, we love y'all very much. We almost showed you the title. We're going to give it another shot. Thank you. Even though fans say goodbye to the Utah Jazz for this season, they know they'll be right back here cheering on the Jazz when they win the world championship in 1998. I expect them to win the final. Yeah. They're going to do awesome. This past year will be a bittersweet memory of how far the Utah Jazz went and where they still need to go. But win or lose, 
These welcome homes show just how many hearts the Utah Jazz captured this season. Thank you, Angela. Airport officials say the number of police officers and security guards on hand during the final welcome home was the largest they've ever had for anyone, and that includes presidential candidate Bob Dole. The playoffs turned Salt Lake City into a real party town. Up next, a look at what's being called jazz stock. Stick around. Well, during the finals season, we here at KSL tried something new, hosting a show me the title party for any jazz fan who wanted to come. And boy, did they come. As news specialist Nadine Wimmer tells us, nearly as many fans attended the party outside the Triad Center as those who watched the game inside the Delta Center. It was something new for Salt Lake City, a party to watch the first home game against Chicago. KSL threw it right here in the Triad parking lot. If you are a jazz fan and you don't have tickets, but you want to watch the game with thousands of Utah jazz fans, there's Big Mo. That's how all these people are going to watch the game. And they're going to have a good time. There were festivities, food, and fans. Lots of them. They rooted for the jazz and even tried to deflate the Bulls. Oh, I'm going to pretend that's uh, Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan right there. Oh. The home crowd got an exciting win that night. I say Utah, you say jazz! Utah, jazz! Utah, jazz! jazz. By the next game, these outdoor, uptown, down-home events were a hit. This is the best of both worlds. We get to come to the game, enjoy the crowd, and do it for free. I think this is the neatest thing I've ever seen. A great view of the game on the comfort of your own lawn chair or blanket. Sourdough bread, uh, deli ham, deli turkey, some pasta salad, every kind of chip you can think of, and noise, noise, noise. <laughs> Once again, a home court win thrilled the crowd so much that several fans took their party to the streets. By the third home game, the show me the title party was more like show me a spot party. You could barely even walk through this crowd estimated at 18,000 people. They perched on the garage terrace, even on the porta potties, to celebrate and watch the game. Despite their endless hope and loyal support, though, the Jazz lost that night. That was the final celebration here in this now empty parking lot, but fans didn't see it as the end. Perhaps it's just a new tradition that brought Jazz fans and the city together. And now they're all waiting for a new season. Well, what a party. We hope we don't have to wait too long to host another Show Me the Title party. We hope not. It was just too much fun, Alema. Well, perhaps never in the history of the state has there been one single event that united the citizens and ignited a pride in Utah like this playoff series did. During the last weeks and days of the playoffs, the state literally had a pulse like it's never had before. Perhaps Utah's governor says it best. Those moments are so rare when a state's heart all beats together at the same time about the same thing. I feel like I've been to a, on a roller coaster ride. I remember that after that first uh, playoff loss, I felt like there'd been a death in the family. Uh, and then they came back, and we had the big shot at the end with John Stockton. And John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals. What a, what a powerful moment that was, and it, it just draws everyone together. We have never seen this kind of emotion from Stockton <laughs> and Malone, and finally, their day has come. We were, the, for those two weeks, the center of the sports universe. The crowd rocking here at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. The this was a significant historical social event in the state. I could not have been more proud, and I think other Utahns felt the same way. Now, I've heard people say, if I could take losing it, I just didn't want John to lose. I just didn't want Carl to lose. I just didn't want Jeff to lose. I just didn't want Larry to lose. I mean, it was a, uh, the whole idea of the relationship that we formed with these people as they were going through this drama uh, was a very real part of the experience. We got there once, we can go there again. 
and when we do, the state will certainly be ready for it. Now, you may have heard more than a few people over the last few weeks saying, show me the title, including the governor of our state. Coming up next, we'll show you how a simple idea caught on and took this state by storm. special thank you to the Utah Jazz, a season to remember. I'm Gretchen Carr. Well, what we, we here at KSL will certainly remember about the season is how much fun we had doing the Drive for the Title specials every night after the 10 o'clock news. Our theme was Show Me the Title, and it seemed like once those spots started hitting the airwaves, everyone wanted to get in on the act. Big Dog here. Big Dog. Mike Levitt. Big Dog, John Sudbury, jazz number one fan. Dick Norris here. It's your president, Bill Clinton here. Well, Big Dog, how are you? This is Nadi Komunich. Remember me, the perfect 10 gymnast? Big Dog, yeah. Hey, look, I'm sick of talking about the money. I got three rings. It's time for Stockham Malone and you to get the ring. Show me the title. Show me the what? Big Dog, show me the title. That, that's not it. Give me the feeling. Show me the title, OK? I want to hear you say it louder. Before I do, you got to show me the title. Please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, show me the title. Come on, little luck, give me the what? No one wears a suit the way you wear a suit. Now show me the title. Come on, I need to feel it, baby. Come, come. You hear me? Come on. You need to get your big butt down there, a whale away, get your hands up, go up with two hands, establish a dominant presence, and show me the rebound so you can show me the title. Come on, baby, I need some feeling. Come on, come on, come on. Show me the title! Hello? Give me much more feeling. I can't hear you. Then show me the title, man. Give me the feeling. Show me the title, big dog. <laughs> I said give me some feeling. Oh, 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 oh. I can't hear you! Dog, I'm telling you, show me the title! Yes, the title now, big dog! You can shoot it, the whole nine yards, but show me the title. Give me much more feeling, I can't hear you! Hey, big dog! Show me Now, there were a whole lot more people that wanted to become Show Me the Title stars, but Alema, we just simply ran out of time. Yeah, that's right, we did. Gretchen, there were others that we taped, but we couldn't use them. A hundred employees of Discover Carb, they danced to the Macarena, but technical problems with our tape meant, well, it didn't make air. There were also a few mistakes that you didn't see, and for good reason. Get close up. Go Everybody got to bark all at once. <laughs> Put the phone okay. to your ear every time. Okay. Is it this week only or whatever you say? No, there's three days left, big dog. Three games left. Three games left. I don't want to hear nothing. I just want to see. I, I need to use a phone. You happen to have a phone. I need one really bad. I need to make an important call. Cellular yeah, phone. you don't have a cellular oh, phone? I've got one. Oh, <laughs> you, you do really? Yeah. Well, I'm... Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll look at the lens and then tip my glasses yeah. down. Yeah. Right. Or take okay. them off. No, tip them down. Got to whatever you want. Okay. I don't know. No, I don't think so. Are, are you gonna want this? Yeah. Do what you're gonna do. Okay. Okay. You ready? May I see your driver's license, registration, and mobile phone, please? So you've got me on the phone, don't you? I mean, I just gotta pick it up and talk because you've already got me doing yeah, that. Yeah. And his name is Tiger Woods. You show me the title, and I immediately change his name to Antoine Big Dog. As a matter of fact, I'll even let him kiss you if you show me the title. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Big Dog, we have you surrounded. Show us the title or we break down your door. Well, he's dancing right now trying to show me the title. Uh, you say Big Dog here. All right. Hey, Big Dog, show me the title. 
What? <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's get serious here. You say what? Show me the, show me the title, baby. Hey. <laughs> Come on, now. Give it to me. Got to show me the title. I can't, I can't hear you. <laughs> show me the title. Baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> show us the title. <laughs> show me the title. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer the phone for a minute. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Oh man. Well, the Jazz didn't quite show us the title, but we sure had a lot of fun asking them to. Well, a Chicago radio host had a few surprises up his sleeve for the Jazz players and even some of our KSL crew. A look at Johnny B and his antics coming up next. Right side, Russell. Fire for three. Got it. Brian Russell, his second three-pointer of the half. The drive for the title reached a new pitch when the Jazz were in Chicago preparing for Game 2, and a Chicago radio station decided to join in on the rivalry. On a Chicago radio station at this very moment, the uh, disc jockeys are calling the Jazz at their hotel, waking them up out of bed. It's just after 7 o'clock in the morning. Hello? Mr. Stockton. Hello. How you doing today? Johnny B. Calling Celebrity Wake Up Call. How are you today? It's a little early. Yeah, I'm going to go back to bed. Thanks. Yeah, all right. Hey, uh, can I ask you a question? No, I'm going to go back to bed. Bye. What time do you usually get up? These were the Monday morning wake-up calls that sparked a telephone war between two cities. He got five of the Jasmine out of bed this morning. Here's how it sounded with Brian Russell. Hello. Uh, Byron, how are you? Uh -huh. Just talked to uh, Stockton. He told me to give you a call about uh, some stuff we're doing right before the meeting today. But you got to call me back, man. I'm asleep here. Byron, but wait a second. My name is Brian. That's what I said, Brian. You said Byron. No, I said Brian. Chicago That's fans called it funny. Utahns ah, called it a lousy calling. trick. Up, and we just left it Chicago. up to you. Johnny B's work number on the air tomorrow, say, oh, about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, is 1-800-746-9472. We're not suggesting you do anything with that. We'll just pass that information along as a public service. The next morning, the phone lines at WLUP jammed with callers from Utah wanting to give Johnny B their two cents worth. And all these lines now are lit with people from Utah. Hello, Susan. What? <laughs> what? Are you calling from Utah? I am. How are you, Lamb Chop? Hello, Gary. Hey, hello. Yeah. I, I really think uh, you kind of suck myself. There you go. Now, are you calling from Utah? Yes, I am. Oh, cool. Back at home, KSL was fielding dozens of calls from retaliating Chicago fans. The banter went on for hours, until finally we decided to pay a visit to the Loop to introduce Utah to Johnny B. We have the Channel 5. Hi, Gretchen. Hi. Uh, Salt Lake City Television just came in here. By evening, it appeared the fervor might die down and go away. By morning, it was apparent it wouldn't. Johnny B just made a phone call to my colleague and our colleague, Gretchen Carr over at the hotel. We're calling uh, Gretchen Carr, KSL NBC affiliate, Salt Lake City, Utah. Hello? Hey, Gretchen. Yes. Hi, this is Johnny B. We're on the air. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? <laughs> you see the front page of the Salt Lake City Tribune today? Well, no. I'm in Chicago. Oh, that's right. Well, now that the playoffs are over, the phone calls have stopped, and I can tell you we're all sleeping a little bit sounder. But just wait until next year, Johnny B., because now Utah has your number. All right, a lot of fun. Hey, in round one, the Jazz had a date with the Clippers of Los Angeles. In the final round, our own Rob Zippy Zundel had his own date with some Clippers, and they were in the hands of Antoine, the big dog car. A look at the Zips clip coming up next. Special program we are calling the Utah Jazz a season to remember. I'm Gretchen Carr. And I'm Alema Harrington. Well, he made the bet. The Jazz won the games. 
and then the public demanded that he shave it off. If bald is beautiful, KSL's Rod Zundel is the king of chrome domes. News specialist Robert Walls tells, tells us why Rod is sporting the new look. Oh, Rod. Oh, this is great, isn't it? The hum of Anton Carr's razor slowly moved across Rod Zundel's head, removing what little hair he had, and creating what many feel is a Rick Majerus look-alike. Don't want to look like Rick Majerus. Rick, I don't look like you, coach. <laughs> Oh, there you go. See, this does not look like Rick Majerus. Zundel got the shave as payment for a friendly bet he made with jazz forward Antoine Carr. Yeah! Hey, dog and the little pup. <laughs> Show me the hair! Well, Rod claims that he didn't bet against the jazz, but offered his hair as an inspiration for the team to do better. But now the series is over, and Rod's head is still bald. Well, I took a shower, you know, trying to rub the uh, fingers through the hair and get some shampoo, but I didn't need any shampoo. <laughs> that was a weird feeling. In Rod's mind, he looks like pro quarterback Terry Bradshaw. Well, yeah, he's my idol, so yeah, I, I don't mind looking like Terry Bradshaw. But Rod now finds himself in a lineup of chrome domers, some favorable, others questionable. Can you pick out which one is Rod? Nope, that's actor Yule Brenner. Now I am a man, world have changed a lot. Okay, try again. Close, but that's actually James McDougall. All right, one more chance. No, nope, wrong again. That's Uncle Fester from the Adams Family. It was kind of eerie, but that was all creepy. <laughs> Rod's head shaving adventure drew a large audience in the drive for the title series. It's hard not to smile when you see Rod's hairless head as he anchors the sports. Some think he looks better this way. Hey, I made a, I made a bet and I lost and. Actually, it feels pretty good, really. Rod should learn you can't bet against the Jazz and win. Rod isn't sure what to do with his hair now or lack of it. He says he wants to try an experiment and see if he can make it look a little more full when it grows back. Well, if you have any hair grow home remedies, he says he'll give them all a try. We'll pass him <laughs> along. Thanks a lot, Alema. Well, not only was the big dog our in-house barber, he was also the MVP for our drive for the title. Houston. Yeah, well, a lot of people kind of think us old guys is kind of <laughs> should be out of here. We're all dust collecting, <laughs> but uh, we're ready. Any comment? <laughs> we'll see. That's all I have to say. We'll see. Uh, you want to make promises? Okay. Well, knock on wood, cross your fingers and toes, and hopefully we can get that. I'm not talented enough to cross my toes. <laughs> well, honey, neither am I, but it sounds good. <laughs> a huge night in jazz history. This is, this is just great, especially to see John hit that jumper like he did. I thought and have Carl set a good pick on the man who was guarding Stock. He did that. Stock got wide open, and then the rest is history. Three points in their face. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My man, honey. Hey, <laughs> the big dog show as we look at this winning shot by Stockton. He's been around 13 years and joining uh, joining us on the uh, drive for the title. Big dogs bringing in Jeff Hornacek. You want to you want to interview your? Interview no, no, your no. Team. I'm gonna let you handle that because I gotta go kiss my family and say yes. All right, take. All right, we're gonna bring in Hornacek. Or is it, it's definitely something to get used to. Uh, I would love to get used to. It. I like to be every year I can, and uh, sometimes the wheel kind of falls off of your car. Well, this one happened to fall off that day. But uh, I think we'll turn that around tomorrow night. And there's no carryover in playoff games. That's what people don't mm -hmm. understand. It doesn't matter how you lose. Each game has its own story. So once you start here, I guess it starts over. Well, we've got to keep our home court advantage here. We've got to come out and play extremely hard. With our fans, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I'll and we'll be right back with a final look at this season to remember. <laughs> Welcome back. We're honoring the Utah Jazz tonight with what we are calling a season 
to remember. I'm Alema Harrington. And I'm Gretchen Carr. Alema, who could ever forget that amazing comeback against Denver? It helped make for a regular season we'll never forget. Yes, indeed. But the memories that are attached to the Jazz' incredible run through the postseason are the best. And we'll leave you tonight with a final look at those playoffs and the hope that the Jazz are right back in there next year. Thanks for being with us. Good night. Let's get ready to rumble! NBA Most Valuable Player. It's, it's unbelievable. You see why John Stock is one of the five best players I ever played against. He was the best player in this series, and he was just terrific tonight. Shot. Oh, 